Are you tired of sitting at your desk all day just to play a video game? Do you have an old Nintendo Switch that's just gathering dust? Does your wife keep stealing your ROG ally to play TCG Card Shop Simulator? Just me. Well, today we'll be installing Atmosphere OS on the Nintendo Switch so we can play Steam games on it. Now, what is it we're doing exactly? Because obviously the Switch isn't going to be powerful enough to say, run God of War. We're installing a custom firmware so we can load the Moonlight Homebrew onto the Nintendo Switch and actually stream the games from our gaming computer so I don't have to sit at the damn chair anymore. And besides, that Switch has got to come out of the closet. Now I know what you're thinking. Where can I get a kick-ass robe like you? And the answer is, that's not important right now. We're focusing on the Switch. The things you'll need to do this are, one, an SD card that you can put in your Nintendo Switch that's probably at least four to eight gigs. Eight gigs would be best. I use a 128 card because I want to have a bunch of shit on there. You're gonna need a way to plug that SD card into the computer, and you're going to need a way to boot the Nintendo Switch into recovery mode. We'll get to that part here in a bit. Is every Switch susceptible to this? No, only first generation, and I want to say maybe like the second generation are more are susceptible to this. I'll put it up here on the screen. But what this is, is it's an unpatchable hardware bug that has existed in the Tegra chipset since its inception. Now, this is patched in later versions of the Switch, so it's not something you can do without, say, a hardware mod. But this here just so happens to be a very first generation Switch, even though I bought it several years late from a Walmart, they must have not been selling very well. So we got lucky with this. Another part, what exactly is this? The thing that boots us into recovery mode. It's not actually this big piece right here, which I'll leave a better picture of since my camera's shit quality. It is this little itty bitty thing right here. What this does essentially is it shorts two of the pins on the right hand side of the Nintendo Switch in the Joy-Con rail. And then in doing so allows you to access recovery mode when you hold volume up and press the power button to turn it on. This is the unpatchable hardware bug that was left in the first couple Nintendo Switches. And this is what makes it incredibly easy to put any custom firmware you want on this. Even Linux for those who are so inclined. For the required files section of the video, we need a couple of things. We need Atmosphere itself, which is the custom firmware we're going to be loading onto the SD card. And we can get that from the GitHub, which I'll leave down in the description. But this bin, because this bin, this binary, is what you're actually going to upload as a payload to the Switch to boot it into Atmosphere. And we're going to want to go get the Moonlight Switch homebrew package. Right here, the Moonlight Switch NRO. Ah, the installation section. Now, truth be told, this literally just consists of copying a couple files over, so I just put it on the side over there, and that's where we're going to leave it. Uh, that's, that's all there is to it. You just put stuff on the SD card, and it's installed. It is miles easier than installing anything on the PS4, that's for sure. Showing the boot process is going to be the interesting part because truthfully, I'm going to have to use a computer and plug something into the switch here. So let's see if I can split this and make it make sense. So in order to even, in order to even get the thing into recovery mode, which is obviously necessary, we need to put our little jig in the switch. Now the jig could also be like a paper clip, which is what I used for months, or a piece of aluminum foil, but the key there is you have to be like crazy careful because if you short the wrong pins, you just fried the processor. Game over, man. That's it. So now that we have it in there, it's going to short the two correct pins of the processor, and we shut the switch off. Oh, hey. Okay, I've kind of darkened the area so we can kind of get a better picture of what's going on on the Switch side, because we can see the computer half just fine, it's bright, but the Switch has a tendency to just wash everything out. And who knows, this may make it worse, but we're going to give it a whack. So on the computer half here, we have Tegra RCM GUI, Tegra Recovery Mode Graphical User Interface. Now this lovely piece of software is useful for the fact that it's a payload injector, which is, the, which is the exact thing we're trying to do to boot into this operating system. It also has a couple other features, like you can turn your Nintendo Switch into a flash drive for easier file transfer, or even boot Linux. But that's not what we're here for. We're here for that Fusey binary we downloaded earlier with Atmosphere. This is the specific payload that we are injecting to boot into Atmosphere. 
Now, you'll notice that the inject payload is grayed out right now, and that's because on the switch side, it's not plugged into the computer. It's not even in recovery mode. As far as the computer's concerned, it doesn't exist. So the trick here is to plug in the switch and boot it into recovery mode before it turns on. Now, this is easier said than done because, admittedly, this is like the fifth time I'm doing this, but let's see if we can do it upside down. You have to hold volume up and tap power to turn it on. In goes the cable, we hold volume up, we tap power, and now we see RCM on the computer half. Thank God. Okay, now that recovery mode is here, we have that Fusey binary we downloaded earlier, like I said, and we just hit inject payload, and if all things go right on the switch side, we should just see it boot in atmosphere. Hello? There it goes. Look at that. It's that easy. It's seriously that easy. You just move some files over on the SD card, plug it in, and inject the payload, and there we go. We have a custom firmware Nintendo Switch. So why'd we do this? What's the point? Well, through Atmosphere, we have this handy little feature called Tidal Redirection. It requires a card, a game card, to be inserted into the slot, which I have Pokemon, what is it, Violet right now, and you hold right bumper and start the game and avoid that software update like the plague because I hate those. And when we do that, we will notice that it doesn't load Pokemon. It loads the homebrew menu. Through this, we have all our utilities that it comes with, or Moonlight that we installed. Moonlight is the program we're after. This is the software that itself will stream from your computer using Sunshine. Sunshine isn't something I'm really going to explain too much. If you know what NVIDIA Game Stream is, or you used Stadia before, or anything like that, you'll kind of understand what it's doing. You're streaming a game from one device to another, like the PlayStation Portal. Now, I'm not gonna go through all the setup here, because again, I'm not going through Sunshine, I'm going through streaming games on the Switch, but it just involves entering a pin from your Switch onto the Sunshine web application, which opens up right when you install Sunshine. I'll leave the link for that below as well. Now that Moonlight's set up, it's literally just as simple as Start Desktop, or you could even hit the Steam Library button if you want to just open Big Picture automatically. It's just the last place I left off on my desktop. But that's it. We have... Steam fully on the Nintendo Switch. Booting into Factorio on my desktop and streaming to the Switch. Gives me something to do when I don't have the ROG at least. Well, that's that. We have a Nintendo Switch that'll run any game that our desktop PC can. If you enjoyed this in any way, please leave a comment on maybe which of the microphones was your favorite.